excited that so many people are interested in um, the village, the village planning process. Um, we have our consultant here tonight, uh, and uh, hopefully everybody had an opportunity to sign in. It's very important that it's legible so that if your email address can get met, um, put on our email list. And anytime we make any changes to the website, if there's news that you need to know, we'll send out an email blast. Um, there's a handout somewhere, and we have. Um, and uh, the website address is on there, as well as some um, email addresses. So if you have any questions or comments about the plan or planning process, you can send it in. And we'll get it as staff, and we'll be able to respond to it and, and, and keep that comment so that everyone is aware of it. Um, we do. Uh, yes, I want you to introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they're very good. I was just so overwhelmed by so many people. Um, I'm Jamie Sherry. I'm the director of community development here in Richland County. Uh, so I'm a uh, I'm staff for the county. Um, I will be introducing uh, our team of consultants as well, but I, speaking of introductions, I did want to point out some people who are here in the audience. Uh, we have Mr. Sharp, who is our uh, Board of Supervisors uh, representative for the 4th District. Uh, we have a couple of planning commissioners here. We have uh, Mr. Um, Kutuk, uh, Mr. Walker yeah. Charlie, uh, right there. Is there any other board or, or uh, planning commissioners I missed? Forgive me. A lot, of, a lot of people. Former, yeah. uh, former welcome. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Alvarez, who is our interim county administrator, and Joanne Hunter, who is our deputy county administrator. And anybody else I miss, feel free to introduce yourself or make yourself known after. Um, so a little bit about tonight. Um, we are going to have a presentation. Last approximately half an hour is going to talk a little bit about the planning process and what to expect. Um, introduce some of the topics that we want to hear from you tonight. After that, um, we're going to break out and uh, we're going to have people standing at each of these areas where the, um, the easels are. There'll be an opportunity for you to make comments and stick on the, um, the boards, you know, make sure that your, uh, you know, your participation really starts right now. It is very important. Obviously, you all are very interested in it. Um, as you all know, uh, Centerville is uh, very, very popular as far as development goes. Um, people want to be here. And if people come here, we want to know what kind of development we need in the future. Talking about types of housing, types of businesses, um, you know, how dense we want um, the neighborhoods to be, or or not. You know, whatever it is that you all want to to share with us, that is what we want. This is your plan, um, and they're they're going to be uh, interpreting what you all want. They'll talk a little bit about the process, but. Um, since we do have such a room full of folks, after their presentation is done, um, I'd appreciate maybe if, um, if if you could like fold your chair up, or if you or if you need help folding up, we'll, staff will come and take them and, and move them out of the room, so we will be able to freely move around. So we weren't expecting this many people. I'm so happy there's this many people. Next time we'll try to get a bigger venue. Well, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, David Hill. Thank you. And he'll introduce us. All right. Thank you. Uh well, thanks, everybody. Delighted to be here. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, just uh, just a little bit of a way of introduction. Uh, my name is David Hill. My company is Hill Studio, and we're in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, also, uh, we, we have a, a group of uh, planners and designers here that I'd like for you to meet. Uh, and they are, um, and since there's only one microphone, I'll, I'll just go ahead and introduce them. Um, uh, uh, with me tonight is Peter Gerardo brilliant planner and uh, uh, illustrator. Uh, he is from our office in Roanoke. Ross Hamas is here, GIS specialist and a planner. Uh, also with us tonight uh, are, is our um, partner firm, um, Arnett Muldrow from Greenville, South Carolina. Aaron Arnett, president, economist, and planner. And also uh, uh, Sean Turpak right here, illustrator and uh, graphic artist. Now, uh, this team will be the, the group that, that works with you over the next 10 months on this plan. Um, and, and I'm going to, uh, after now that I've introduced the project team, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, e each of these people will actually have a direct role working on it. These are some of the senior folks from both of our firms. And, and each of them is, has their own special expertise. Um, so uh, when we break, break away from this podium, uh, each of us will, will kind of go to the four corners of the room uh, when we would like to actually meet you and hear, uh, you know, introduce ourselves and hear from you. Um, and we want this to be a very collaborative project all the way through. So uh, 
you're not only here tonight, we're going to put you to work. We want to talk to you and share with you things and hear your feedback all throughout the um, process. So, the project itself, uh, you know, tonight is the first night of the project, and tonight we don't know anything about Centerville. That's why we invited you to tell us. Uh, good evening, Centerville Village. That's that's where we've, that's as how how far we've gotten, and um, so uh, we were invited to prepare what we call a small area plan, and and it's based on uh, the plan that was put together in 2015. Now seems kind of recent, but now it's it's about seven years old. The tw it's called the 2035 Comprehensive Plan. So. Uh, in that plan, uh, the county identified uh, Centerville as the primary gateway into the county, especially from the east. Um, and so we, we've started to, uh, we started with this direction, and the idea is we're going to look at a number of aspects of this area and then come back with a, a plan. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a dive into the economics of the area to try to understand what's really going on and what the economic possibilities are. Then we work with uh, you all to see what you want in the village and also what you don't want. That's just as important. We call it village programming. We would like to see these uses. We would not like to see these other uses. We take those two together and we put together a design for the village. And of course you've already gotten started in a number of the aspects but it's coordinating the design going forward. So it'll have land use uh, Components, it'll discuss density, and I understand that's actually a pretty hot topic right now with you, so we want to hear what you have to say about it. And you know, it's not only the bricks and mortar of the place, but it's how you brand it, um, and particularly this, this uh, you know, how do you, how do you portray this area to uh, the region and to the world? And then finally, uh, toward the end, we put together a, a land plan and design guidelines. Uh, for this small area. Um, while this is going on, there's another entire project that, that we're not, that none of the, our, our team is part of, but there's another uh, transportation plan that's also going on. A number of other consultants are working on it. They're, they should be finished before we are so we can incorporate their work into our final plan. Um, and so a little bit about the process. Tonight is our Meet the Community Night. Uh, and then February and March, we'll be doing a lot of research, sort of behind the scenes, quiet stuff. Um, in March and April, we'll have a community-wide survey out, and uh, that'll be uh, attached to the website uh, that uh, Jamie mentioned a minute ago. And we encourage each of you to take the survey. I hope there'll be some fun questions on it, Aaron and, and uh, Ross working up the survey. And you don't have to be a resident of Centerville to take the survey send it to as many people as you want to send it to. If you have a son or daughter that's living in California, send it to them. We want to know what they think about Centerville, you know, the more the merrier. We can just, we can, well, because we can determine where the surveys come from when they come back. So we'll have a group that it, we know if you're here, we know if you're there, and we can tell what the different sentiments are about the place and what the interests are both far and near. I'm, I'm sorry, but why go in Centerville and not put it where it can be used towards the high school? Because in that area, there's only one grocery store and a family dollar. I'm sorry, you're saying, uh, well, here's, let me tell you how this was supposed to work, and it will work. The, I will, let me just get through this initial piece. And then we'd love to hear from everybody as you come around and actually talk to us one on one yeah, uh, later on. So. We just, this is a, a 30 uh, minute presentation. If we get sidetracked, it'll take your opportunity to participate and talk away. So we want yeah. to make it right through. So come see me and, and visit. I'll be over here. So come, come talk to me about that particular piece then. Okay. All right. In, in May, we'll come back for a midway public meeting. And that's, that's the first time that we'll have some work product that we'd like to review with each of you. In June through August we'll be refining this work and we'll bring it back to you in August for our final public meeting and open house. Then we'll take it uh, on to the Planning Commission and Board in September and October and we'll be uh, getting it adopted uh, in November. So about a, 
a 10 uh, month work period. So the first piece of this is to understand the economics and, uh, and I'll call on Aaron to give us a quick market snapshot. <coughs> Right, so anything that we do, whether it's a master plan or a small area plan, it's market-based. It's grounded in what the economy tells us is needed, as well as what you tell us you need. So we'll ultimately be doing a comprehensive market analysis for this area. Um, a couple of things I wanted to share with you tonight, because we, also, we always have to think about your area in context with your surrounding area and the larger county. A um, couple things about the county. We've got uh, the latest census out. You're 24,727 people in the county. That's the population in 2020. That's small. That's rural. You're a small place. However, just in the last 10 years, you've grown by 14%. Um, so you're growing fast. In fact, you're growing faster than virtually every other place in this region. So that's something that we need to understand. We know there's things that you all hold dear about your county and the Centerville area, so how do we work with the growth that has happened, the growth that may be coming to protect and preserve what we hold dear about this place? Um, a couple of other things that are interesting, when we look at income levels, meaning household income or perhaps even um, property values, you all are at the upper end of the region there as well. You're your uh, median household income in 2020, again, is 93994 Again, on this chart, you can see you're at the upper end of the region. So those are, those are all very positive indicators. Down in the eastern now, the western end. now, but exactly, thank you very much. We have to put that in context with the region. Um, and so when we look at Centerville itself, we're going to be pulling all these numbers together. Centerville's um, median household income is about $118,000. Um, but there's some other indicators that we have to understand as well. First is the population. Centerville's population is very small. It's just developing right now. There's lots of open land. Um, you know, there's certainly some uh, residential areas and, and even apartments and things where people live, but you're really small in this area. More, most importantly, um, we can't think about the market and the economy just within the boundaries of your area because people come to this, uh, to Centerville, to come to, uh, you know, come to the church. They go to different uh, businesses that you all have there, and they're coming from all over the place. Um, if we look, if we... I don't. I don't know that. I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, there might be demand for a new liquor store. Who knows? We'll find that out. But if you look on these maps, when we break up, virtually every station has the boundary of those maps. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is when we think about you in context with the immediate area, if you look, we know that your population is very small. If you look with just a 15 minute drive from you all, your population is 336,000 people that are within the 15 minute drive from where we are right now. That is a massive amount of population that impacts you, whether they're residents, whether they're driving our roads to go from one place to the other, or whether they're coming to our businesses. Something that we need to understand. Um, one of the things that we've looked at right now is a retail leakage study. We're going to look at a lot of different things, but we're looking at commerce first and commercial first. And the, a leakage study, essentially what it does, it's a simple supply and demand study. It looks at what people in a geography spend on an annual basis and compares that to the businesses that exist in that geography, what they sell on an annual basis. So if people that live in a study area are spending a lot more than what the stores are selling, then that means people are having to go out for that particular good or service because it's not located here in that study area. Centerville itself, it's actually a gainer. It's bringing in more dollars than the people that live here um, spend on an annual basis. And again, I think that is a testament to the fact that there's not a lot of population here right now. That, now, that may change in the future, but again, another thing that if we look at the county, um, there's a tremendous amount of commercial demand here in the county right now. About $425 million is needed here within the county. Now, some of that certainly could be accommodated in the Centerville area, in the courthouse area, in the western part of the county, certainly. 
Um, but one of the things that we have to do, we have to think about all of these numbers that we're going to be pulling in context with the larger region because our friends to the east of us in short pump, they're gaining about $350 million a year. So um, they're probably absorbing some of the demand. That stands to reason. I'm sure you, I see heads nodding. I'm sure you all understand that. But again, that's just to let you all know that we have to look at you all in different sort of bubbles around you all to understand what these these numbers mean. Ultimately, what we will be doing is um, doing a market definition study. I've done that 15 minute drive time, but we'll talk with the businesses and um, some property owners to understand, okay, what is the market geography that's relevant to us? We're going to do a more detailed retail study. We're going to do a housing assessment and understand what uh, those housing needs are in terms of price point and, um, and housing type. We'll look at employment as well. You definitely have become already a receiving area um, and an employment center here, and that's going to continue to grow. Um, so uh, we'll look at that as well. And then ultimately, we're going to take all this data that we gather, everything that you're telling us, uh, based on the vision of this area, and start to develop these economic and business development strategies that's going to help make sure that we achieve that vision. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ross. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so part of this analysis, guys, is, is also looking at your existing conditions, um, you know, understanding, well, first of all, what is the, the Centerville boundary? That was just brought up. Sorry, we didn't quite get to it yet. Um, so, you know, obviously 64 uh, is your northern boundary, your and the Henrico County line is the eastern boundary, but, you know, just exploring how, how far west, how far south does that, does that boundary truly go? You know, does it need to be expanded? Does it need to be shrunk? Those are the types of things that we will get into over the course of this progress. Um, so, in addition, uh, looking at topographic relief, you know, your land conditions, your, 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 um, your depressions, your elevations, you know, all those things factor into what's developable and what isn't. Um, again, future land use, as, as David mentioned, the, the 2035 comp plan um, outlines, you know, red being commercial, um, yellow being uh, residential, and uh, various land uses, uh, future transportation, all those things are uh, things that we want to take into consideration. Are they the right, is it the right place for a road? Is, uh, you know, those, those types of things are very important in this meeting. Um, in addition, looking at design overlay districts, uh, that is basically, uh, there are a set of design guidelines that um, direct how the roads and streetscapes, uh, you know, buildings, all those things look, signage. Um, so there are certain design guidelines set in place, and this is, this is the area defined um, for that, uh, looking at parks and public facilities, uh, if you compare this to the, the courthouse village, you obviously have a lot more parks, you have more public facilities. Um, is there a need for a community center um, in Centerville? Possibly yes, uh, based on tonight's um, um, attendance, I would say so. Um, you know, parks and recreation space, all those things are important and, and will come out of this meeting. Uh, in addition, looking at residential subdivisions. Um, you see some of these are, are, are pretty clearly built out. Some of them are, are future proposed subdivisions. Um, and then lastly, looking at utility service areas. Uh, this just shows like a 200 foot buffer from the existing water and sewer lines, just showing what areas are, are, are served and what areas are maybe underserved. Um, there maybe needs to be extensions. Um, so all these are things that we look at to assess the current situation and, and determine and what, you know, what's next. And planning for future growth. So I'm going to pass this off to Sean. He's going to go into some of the community branding aspects. So community brand is important for any community with any population size. And one thing that we want to put everybody at ease at is we don't want to come in and try to create you as like brand you as a product. All right, sorry. So we don't want to create you, like brand you as a product. You know, we want to represent you authentically for your character, your history, your assets that you have in the community. And these, this is a selection of brands that we've done in the Virginia region over the past number of years. And so we've got a lot of different ideas that we get from the community whenever we go in, whether we're looking at architecture, we're looking at the natural resources, we're looking at the history. You know, we take meetings like this and input from you and we distill that down into an authentic identity for you to tell your story because as development inevitably happens, we want people that are coming into your community to buy into your character. They want to, you want them to feel like they're a part of your community. You know, you've established this community over generations and we want to keep that story going forward. And so in doing that, we'll be looking for inspiration from you all 
in what assets you have here, what inspires you, and your aspirations for the, the village moving forward. And so yeah, this is an example in Graham County, North Carolina, where we did a county brand. And we're already inheriting the identity of the Goochland County identity. And so we're going to be looking towards that for inspiration, for colors and, and typefaces and things of that nature. But you can see here how we can create a platform for events, for other organizations, for other districts or communities within the county, and, and how all those elements really play a part to tell a broader story with a simple toolkit. And here's some of the elements, the swag that you can do with t-shirts, wayfinding signage to help people get around the community, and um, you know, updating just to tell your story, whether you're having a parade over the holidays or whether you're doing a farmer's market, you want the consistency amongst those events so that people feel like they're, they're part of the community and they see this consistency about there and there's more of a unified message going out to you know, the broad audience. You know, even advertising, whether it's print or online. And then there's other ways of doing it, uh, such as for Scythe County, Georgia, where we did more of a districting strategy because there weren't really city centers within this county. There's a main city, but we had these character districts. So we provided an overall brand and then just allowed them to pull the colors and the typefaces from there to, to have their own unique addition to the brand. But we didn't need to go through this exercise for every individual uh, district. And there, one of the important things uh, was bannering so that people really felt like there was a creative, like there's a sense of place that it just created that arrival for people. And I think that's important here for people coming from the East to know that they've arrived somewhere. You know, let's create a delineation that they are in Centerville now and uh, that we can create that sort of image and welcome for them so that they have, you know, that, that sense of, of arrival. So there's a lot of options that we can go through once we create and establish an identity and that will really help tell your story. And that's what we're going to be asking tonight as we break out and you know, answer some of the questions on these boards, just looking for inspiration from you about what you feel really inspires you about your community and what you want, what story do you want to tell to visitors, to Residents like you know family that may have moved away may have moved to California and you know You want to remind them of how good it was back home. Uh, you know, we want to help you tell that story moving forward Well, if you've got family that moved there, I'm just saying you know bring them back home show them the good life So I'm going to turn it back over to David, right. but look forward to talking to you all afterwards All right, all right no, no more California references All right so we've talked about some of the background stuff, you know, the, the background mapping, the economics. Sean sort of uh, putting it, that, that sort of message you send. And then we're also going to deal with the real bricks and mortar about what makes a, a village, right? And you know what's cool? There's a, there's a really interesting display in the lobby of your, uh, of your uh, county administration building. Uh, Goochland, the county of villages. This village stuff isn't new to you guys. You've been working on it for a couple hundred years. Uh, and, you know, we look at, uh, at the comp plan, that's where we take our very first direction, right? And, and they say, um, you know, the goal with the village is to have balanced development that contributes to the welfare of the community and preserves its rural character. Um, and then it goes on to talk about high quality developments, vibrant, healthy villages, respect the character of each community, high quality residential development, <coughs> compatible with the adjacent uses, preserved cultural, natural, historic resources, and, you know, all that surrounded by viable agricultural and forestry. You know, it's, it's a tightrope to, to create a great village and, and, and preserve and, and balance this. So we started to look to different places to, uh, you know, what are the elements of a village? We, we've seen the historic Goochland. We've seen what's in the comp plan. And if you will Google these few words, Elements of a village, here are the first 10,000 things that come up. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, what? it's like the, ga the gamer community has figured out everybody wants to build a village. And so all the, lots of different games to tell you how to do it. So that wasn't a very good search. So we started to look, what do other people think about a village? And this was pretty interesting. This is the, the 2021 Best Villages in the World by the Travel Writers Association. This was their candidates. And, uh, and so 
what was interesting you know, all over the world it's from Tibet to Greece to, to Turkey to you know, all over the place but there's some interesting uh, these and these are the pictures that they sent that represented these villages but so we started looking at them like well what do they have in common well one of them is they absolutely have they have kind of defined boundaries or edges you know, and mother nature dealt these folks probably a much harder hand than they dealt you here uh, with mountains and, and lakes and rivers and, and very, you know, boundaries. Nature holds these villages tight. Uh, it's sort of, uh, you know, open space rules. So another thing that you see with these, place-based architecture. You, can't, you won't see the Tibet architecture in the little English village or the English architecture in the little uh, you know, Greek village, there is absolutely responds to that natural environment. And that's a, a takeaway I think we, you can use here for, uh, you know, for Centerville. Uh, the, what is the specific architecture of this place, and, and what is it, and how can we uh, refine it? There's very little signage in any of these villages, at least in any of the pictures of the village. If, you're, if, you're, um, if your village works well enough, you don't need a whole lot of signage. And you know what else is cool about these pictures? I don't know if you figured this out yet. There's no cars in these, at least in the pictures, right? <laughs> there are a lot of boats, but there aren't any cars. So the, the travel writers, at least they, you kind of know where they're coming from. So, so we've looked at, you know, history of the county, looked at the gamers' village, the planners' village, the travel writers' village. Finally, there's a group of, of things that, that most planners sub subscribe to, the basic elements of the village. And, and these are kind of, these, these uh, words here are sort of fancy for, for other things. For example, you know, any great village has terrific outdoor spaces or common or squares. It has, uh, people care about the roadways, the greenways, getting you from one place to another. They can be subdefined in districts. And this is something I think we really want to drill down on here in Centerville. Uh, you know, where is the boundary of Centerville, you know? Um, Landmarks are special buildings that provide special visual cues in a, in a great village. And finally, their edges. It's where the village noticeably stops. It doesn't just sprawl into the next place. To make a village, it has to have a nice edge. So, you know, just a couple of examples. The Virginia Courthouse Town's a great example of a great public space. You know, the courthouse green. And you've got one just a, a few miles over in your own courthouse village. This one is, I think this was Clark County, but most Virginia towns or villages have a great courthouse green. But that's not the only way to have a great uh, civic space, you know. Uh, maybe it's farmer's market or you just some kind of great defining several maybe uh, open spaces. You know, it's a lot of them actually historically had military uses, but then they've been converted to more commercial uses uh, in the, you know, recently. So, yeah, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> we, get, we recycle a statue or two, there. but uh, <laughs> uh, don't, don't get started. All right, here, here's, here's, four, here's four great common spaces, and none of them have a statue, okay? Uh, you know, um, uh, you know a different, and they can be little, they can be big, but they tend to be programmed for a specific use. You know, you're going to invite everybody to have breakfast outside or you're going to invite everybody to come to a concert in the park it, you know, specific uses and you know uh, really kind of a lot of successful villages have a have kind of a night scene uh, that's part of it too not it doesn't all just kind of roll up and go away at five o'clock so you know paths take us from one place to another whether they're giant uh, interstate highways or, or just really nice little trails and in, in a, you know, in your village, you may want us to really concentrate on the building blocks of, of what that, those are. Um, you know, if you think about it, uh, cities and towns and villages that were designed way before the car, you know, Seville is kind of a little maze of streets, all different sizes and shapes. Midtown Manhattan is the exact opposite. You know, it's a perfect grid where you can see from one end of the city to the other. As, as cars have grown and grown and grown in popularity, you know, you, you get the sort of suburban Atlanta footprint down there that is, you know, a lot of, a lot of street per capita, uh, a lot of asphalt. But, which is interesting because if you look, the recent study by the Journal of Transportation Health sort of said, you know, some of these oldest are actually where the, the uh, healthiest people live. Uh, people don't like to walk when it's hundreds of feet between houses. And so, you know, the sort of healthiest uh, uh, there's kind of a neat correspondence in street grids and, and health. 
Uh, so you have to help us decide. And a, a lot of your streets are already in place, but connecting the dots, you know, do you, do you kind of have this kind of uh, wandering paths, or do you have a more a geometric form, or even a super geometric form? You know, tell us what you want to uh, to put in uh, Centerville. Not only do the paths have a you know a sort of alignment that you see from the top, but the character of the past makes a huge difference in the perception of the place and whether people love the place. Whether it's a sort of a nice country road or a place like uh, this is Annapolis where uh, you know it's very much shared between the car and the pedestrian about 50-50 here. Or to even go so, f uh, so far in some places as to say well you know the cars well they could just have that little space over here because most of this belongs to people. You know there's there, there are types of the types of streets that are right for each, and and uh, you know, a great village has a variety of these uh, districts. One that I thought you might be interested in, because uh, during my lifetime, it's changed so much. Is this sort of west end of uh, Richmond, particularly around VCU? What's the VCU district? You know, we used to think of it as oh, it's a few blocks there, Floyd Street. But, you know, VCU, in, in my own lifetime, has made an intentional change. We're going to change that district. We're going to change its character. And now, if you look on their website, they'll say um, the Monroe Park is the center of the undergraduate college. You know, sort of like it, it grew bigger than my own perception. It's a bigger district. And, in fact, even more recently, it, you know, with Siegel Center and other things, they've kind of even moved across uh, that, that West Broad. So the district has changed. Its perception has changed. It's grown over the years. So think about that example. You all probably know it even better than I because you've, you've lived here a long time. Okay, think about that when we get to Centerville, right? Does it have districts? Does it have one gigantic district? That's probably something you all were asking about. It seems kind of, kind of huge, really. Uh, or does, is it a number of smaller districts? You know, do you, do you take that and, and say, we well, you know this is different from this area over here. Does it have different districts? It may get treated different ways. So that's something that we're going to work with you guys on, what you think is appropriate on that. Edges, uh, the edge of, of the village. Um, you know, Inverness is a place, uh, Scotland, it has probably the most defined edges of any village. Painters have loved it for centuries because it has mountains or cliffs or, or rivers. Uh, you know, it's, it's defined by nature. A lot of times designers try to create this sort of sense of village where it might end at the fields or the forest or the lake, and they try to provide that kind of boundary because it really helps to make the edge of the village. Where you can't do it as well, you, you sort of even can substitute with, you know, welcome to whatever it is. You know, you, you kind of define it yourself with a gateway. So that'll be something that we explore with you. So it's not only the, um, the outdoor spaces, but it's also the, the buildings. And Peter will uh, finish us up with a conversation about uh, some of the buildings and how we treat those <coughs> Uh, with the village. Good evening. Well, uh, part of our uh, introduction tonight, we, we want to hear from you, of course, uh, and we're, we're just starting this conversation about uh, architectural, uh, the architectural design piece, and we are going to look at that, and uh, during our process, we'll, we'll look at public buildings, uh, private businesses, commercial buildings, and uh, housing. and. Uh, you know, just thinking through several qu questions just to kind of give you a, an intro tonight. Um, you know, style is one thing we're going to uh, talk about. What, what is the architectural style for um, Centerville Village going to be? The, um, uh, the form, the materials, uh, even perhaps the details. Uh, here you see a, an example of a fire station uh, treated in, in different ways. We just chose that as an example. And, of course, your... Um, fire station there on the, on the top left. Uh, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to look at style, architectural style. Uh, density is an important question, and uh, we really want to hear from you about that this evening. Uh, this slide shows a range of densities from a single, f that historic uh, uh, lock keeper's house there on the top uh, left in your, in your county. Uh, there are examples here of a duplex, of um, uh, a small, uh, live work on the bottom left there, and then townhouses, apartments, uh, higher density toward the, the right of the slide. So uh, these show a, a range of densities. Uh, 
you know, what's the density, the scale that's going to be right for um, uh, your your village? And so I would just put an asterisk next to this topic. What, if, if nothing else, please uh, give us your comments on that this evening. Uh, Placemaking is a, an important thing we want to uh, talk about. Um, you know, what are the uh, what are the things? Uh, how can we uh, build buildings, uh, renovate buildings in your community that uh, create great uh, places, memorable places where people want to come back to? Uh, you know, a store in and of itself does not necessarily build community, uh, but how can buildings be planned and built to really serve the community? This shows some commercial buildings, uh, a variety of uh, commercial buildings. And then just a final slide, uh, uh, amongst other questions, perhaps uh, this question. You know, how does the planning of buildings and the uh, design of buildings, uh, how can they uh, be uh, welcoming of the pedestrian, uh, in improving that pedestrian experience, but also uh, accommodating the vehicle? Of course, we have to uh, think of both of those things. And you know, this is getting to that idea of, of uh, connectivity, being connected uh, within the village between buildings and uh, the rest of the community. So these are some of the questions, and uh, I'd really encourage you just to um, offer us your thoughts this evening, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. All right, so next steps, everybody. Um, we've got a, we're here for about an hour to, to visit with you. Uh, you know, one-on-one, we've got um, uh, Aaron will be uh, discussing economics over in this corner. We've also got the maps over there. Sean's got branding here, sorry. <laughs> I've got some of the outdoor spaces there, and then Peter's got some of the buildings back there. This is the be very beginning of this process. It'll last about 10 months. And um, what we'll do when we adjourn here is to, um, I think if, you're, if your chair is at a table, just push it into the table. But some of these, especially over here, if we can get these chairs folded and handed to these guys, they'll get them back in the closet. So we have a little bit of room to maneuver around. Um, so, um, so I, I guess, is, is there, yes? It's just one question about how does Centerville, the village, um, plan along with Mannequin Town, which has already been planned and approved? Yeah, so we recognize that as something that is an approved plan. Um, so they, by right, they can go in there and do that. Um, it went through a very long process, and I've uh, um, worked with uh, the consultants kind of bring them up to speed and so that's something that we're looking at you know how does it incorporate you know the architectural style is that for that district as we possibly said or is that the entire thing there's all that is definitely playing into that and uh, you know that's already been decided but beyond that you know we have to see if, if that's something we build on or is that something that we, we go yeah you tell us what you yeah, think not now but at yeah. the table yeah. right, right, right. well, right. yep. that is Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so the thing, yeah, thank you. That's a good point. Um, what will that entail? What will what entail? The plan that you just spoke Oh, well, that, um, so it, it is something that has already been approved. And so that, oh, the question was, how does Mannequin Town play into this planning process? And as all of you know, or most of you probably know, um, Mannequin Town has been approved. Uh, there's a master plan, and by right, they can go in there and build it right now. Uh, so the question is, is that something that we want to expand on and build upon, the architectural, the density, all those things, or does it stop there? I mean, those, those are the kind of things that we want to what hear from you. What does Mannequin Town incorporate? What is it about? Um, we, can get it, we can get into that a little yeah. bit. Do you want to? Now, Mannequin Town is a, a, a oh. rezoning request that was approved. 2020. Um, 2020. Um, it is for the property that is next to the EVB bank where the farmer's market is. It is a um, 234 unit development and mixture of um, apartments and townhomes. Um, townhomes. And there is a required commercial element that has to be um, built. Um, but it does have a, you know, a, a unique character um, that, that maybe perhaps could be continued or changed or something. So that will all be considered as part of this application. And just, just before I get into that, so these, these were, tonight was really just the kickoff to get you thinking, showing you images of what villages and things are. What we would be using or why we came up with Centerville is because that's an identified village in our comprehensive plan. Um, the village concept has been part of our comp 
comprehensive plan since about the 80s, um, and we really have never looked at the boundaries. So we're doing also the courthouse area, so we're looking at that also. When we go through this process, so we didn't have information to give to you tonight because as we create the plan, we need your ideas of what you want. This is your village, this is your community, and we want to have a plan that reflects your desires. So as we go through this process, at the end, this would be adopted as part of the comprehensive plan and be the new village plan for this area. So that would be land uses, things like that. So that's sort of our Bible as people develop their properties. The first thing we do is we go to the comprehensive plan. Is it consistent? Um, is this property supposed to be residential? Is it supposed to be commercial? If it's residential, what is that density? Is it at two units per acre? Is it five units per acre? So those are all the things we are trying to get from you tonight, and we will incorporate it in our plans, and it will, it will um, help guide how this area develops over the next 20 years. Who is the developer for Centerville Village? There, the, there's no developer with this project. This is a county plan. So we are asking for your feedback as the community to develop this plan so as development requests come in the future, we know what, what the citizens want. Does the plan change the master plan, the comprehensive plan? It would be adopted and overlaid, yes, the, the old comp, comp, uh, comprehensive plan would go away and this new plan would, would be in place of it. So hopefully the plan is to turn the center of the into another yeah. short yeah. plan. That's what is going to be your guys' decisions. That's why you're here to tell us. Uh, that's what you need to be telling us what you want and what you don't want. How do we reclaim the Centerville name instead of Vanican Town in the middle of Centerville? <laughs> Yeah, which is uh, but we, we need to adjourn this, really. Yeah. All right, so uh, if we're all going to be breaking out to areas, and staff will be here. We all have badges on. We'll be around. Please come see us individually.